Surely by now you all have seen all the videos and all the lore about water slides in the back rooms. Well, the level that I'm going to go over in today's video explains where you'll go if you take one of those water slides in any level. This one is very unique. It is backrooms level negative 989, also known as Sunken Land. The vibe of this level is so liminal and uncanny, and it's really just amazing. I really enjoy these deep negative levels, and if you do as well, leave a like and comment other negative levels that I also should go over. Without further ado, without any more yapping on from me, let's get into the explanation, shall we? Level negative 989 of the back rooms opens with a very ominous question. Do you miss the water slides? This question sets up the nostalgic vibe that the entire level has, and it kind of gets you in the right headspace for when you dive right into this level. So while I go about explaining the level, have that question in your mind. Do you miss the water slides? The level has been given a survival difficulty of class integral because of some mental and physical hazards as well as a single entity that lives in the level. The Sunken Land is a humongous indoor water park complex with a few other features that I'll get into later. Except this indoor water park is not a wholesome one from real life. It's not just got wave pools and cool slides. No, this place has the vibe of the bottom of the ocean giving the level an atmosphere of being very far away from life, very lonely, and overall very isolating. The level itself is split into a ton of different parts and places of interests, and I'll be going over every single one of them in order in this video, of course. But the main ones are the park itself, the bridge, and the peak. But before I dive into all those specific places, I want to go over the basics of the level. The sounds that echo around Sunken Land resemble water trickling and dropping, as well as the soft sounds of rain running through pipes. The floor of this water park consists typically of knee-deep pools, with randomly placed platforms throughout where you can walk. These pool areas on the floor are very similar to the pool rooms, except this is kind of like an indoor water park. Fake rock formations are also placed around the level that kind of add to that bottom of the ocean ambience. The level page describes that part as artificial rock formations appear inside the park as well, resembling tall ravines or small hills. The layout of the level is organic, shaped by concrete walls, bridges, and water slides. It's pretty random, but never non-Euclidean, end quote. Staying in this water park for long periods of time is really not a good idea. Although sliding down the slides and swimming in the pools is pretty fun, the level actually seems to cause discomfort and paranoia to those who come and stay. Symptoms of overstaying your welcome include forgetfulness, distress, discomfort, and overall uneasiness. The warm, calm water that you once knew when you got here will turn cold and unforgiving. Your ears will begin to ring, and you'll constantly want to look over your shoulder. You'll feel like you don't belong, even though you just felt like this was an awesome level. I'll get into more of the symptoms and their causes later on, because it gets kind of crazy. Sunken Land gets its name because of the way it looks. I mean, it literally looks like you shoved a water park to the bottom of the ocean and enclosed it in glass. There's this murky fog that floats around the confines of the level that really give it more of an ominous place and it ups the confusion as well. Because it's so foggy sometimes, you really can't see the right path to take and it just makes your mind scattered. Now this level is also mysteriously not connected to any other watery levels in the back rooms. There's no entrance from the pool rooms or the tainted pools or anything like that. It's kind of just its own thing off alone and far away from any other form of life. You are completely and utterly abandoned and deserted when you're in this level. The floor of the level, when it's not covered in those pools, seems to be covered in some kind of yellow tile, as well as other colored tiles you might run into. They feel like concrete to touch, or almost like enamel. Like I said, very similar to the pool rooms, except the pools here typically don't get too deep. The park feels very cool and moderate in its climate. It's not very hot, but it's also not freezing cold, it's kind of just in the middle. That is until you stay for longer and you start to get colder and feel more uncomfortable. And in fact, like I said, while you're walking around for the beginning part, this level will be comforting and calming and relaxing. Kind of feels like this oasis where there's just calm water, slides, 
kind of these cool places you can just relax in until those feelings of discomfort and uneasiness begin to appear. But before that happens, let's get into those three areas that I mentioned first that you can explore. First up is the park area. So the park is the beginning of where every wanderer will start this level at. This is where Sunken Land begins, and this is where all these random water park structures like slides and pathways are at. The slides here twist and turn, and the paths here create these maze-like expanses of these tiles that lead to one another. Everything here feels almost AI generated. It feels like you shouldn't be able to explore and interact with it, but here you are doing both of them. Each of the slides can be accessed, and you can actually go up and down them like a normal water park from real life. This is kind of the safest area in the entire level, and this is likely where you'll want to stay for the longest duration of your time here. This is the place that's inside, it's kind of safe from whatever's outside, and it's just a good place to hide from the entity that lives here. I'll get into that in a second, but essentially the entity is kind of attracted by sounds, and since there's so much crashing water and running water here, like in the lazy rivers and in the waterfalls, the entity kind of can't sense you. Next area is the bridge. Now the bridge acts kind of as a central point to the level, almost a hub, if you will. The level page describes the bridge as follows, having multiple brightly painted bridges stretching to different places. The bridges float, they don't have any supports, and most of the time, they act as water slides. They twist and turn, just like the water slides in the level. And even some of them have running water, making it difficult to travel on them." End quote. These bridges pretty much connect you to the different water park areas and the different lazy rivers and pathways. The next area is the peak. Now the peak is mainly used as the exit from this water park. It's definitely the safest way to escape, which again, I will explain later. I know I keep saying that, but I actually will. And it consists of this maze-like structure of small lazy rivers that you'll have to traverse through to get to the middle structure. Once you get to this tower thing, you can allegedly exit through the staircase that leads directly through the middle up. If you follow the lazy rivers past this peak and this tower area, you'll get to the waterfall area, which is kind of this more hidden part of the level where everything falls down below it. It's a place of horror and claustrophobia. It's a place you want to avoid. And this place beyond the waterfalls is called the flush. So the flush is this area underneath the park. This is a huge system of interconnected, claustrophobic sewer tunnels. This is where all the water in the level runs through and gets sifted through and sent to the different slides and pools. It's not a gross place or anything like that. It's not a sewer system. And the water actually smells of soft chlorine and chemicals, but it is very claustrophobic and there's knee deep water rushing throughout all of them. So it kind of takes a little bit of effort to even explore. The layout of these tunnels is very similar to the pool room's hallways, where some of them can be deeper, some can have these huge drops in them, and some can be just very topsy-turvy and treacherous to traverse. The water normally just runs softly with its current through the tunnels, and the entire vibe inside of here is loneliness. You feel so disconnected from everything, and essentially you feel like this is never going to end. These tunnels go through the entire length of this massive water park, and for a long time you'll be stuck in them forced to walk around and explore. You can lose your mind very quickly here, and you can lose your direction very quickly as well. So if you can avoid it, don't go down these waterfalls, don't go too deep in the level, avoid them at all costs. So what I just explained, you know, the park, the bridge, the tunnels, the peak, all of that, that is inside of Sunken Land, that is in this water park area. But there's also an exterior of the park that has its own strange and own enigmatic features, which of course I will get into right now. This area is located outside where the water slides are, and and it's very different, has a completely different vibe. The outdoor area consists of multiple small water parks scattered out in a more normal setting. It doesn't feel like you're underwater here, there's no mist or anything, but it still feels strange and foreign because these water parks feel abandoned. They're connected by asphalt and not tiles like in Sucken Land, and they feel like water parks that you've been to as a child, above ground, regular water parks. Once you walk past these outdoor water parks, you'll run into the beach area and the beachside place in this level. 
It's thought that this beach backs up to the ocean where Sunken Land is located in. Since it feels like it's underwater, it's believed Sunken Land is under that ocean, and this beach is kind of on the border of it. These ocean and beachfront places are dotted with these damp and empty and strange buildings, like cafes and motels. These places are kind of like last stops while you explore the outside part of the level, since there's really no resources in the entire level at all, except for these little buildings. It really feels like an abandoned tourist trap. There's these shacks and stuff like that. It's all empty and eroded and damp. And all this outside area feels so forgotten. Now even then, that's not the end of the border of this level because you can travel past all those places of interest. The indoor, underwater water park, the exterior, all of that, you can travel past all that and you'll get to the furthest reaches of the level, which is past the parking lots for those water parks. It's called the fenced limit. This is essentially just this repeating row of fenced walls that act kind of as a boundary to Sunken Land and all its contents. No one knows what's past this wall, but it doesn't seem like it's a good idea to jump in and explore it. It's believed that a very large mass of unexplored things exist and live and thrive beyond this fence. But to get to the fence itself, it's a journey because you have to make it through the underwater water park up above to the exterior, go through that water park and get through the beach side area with all the little shacks. Then you'll find the parking lot and then that's where this fence is. But all of what I just described to you is sunken land. And none of what I've described is outright dangerous, right? It's just these water parks. There is a very scary and dangerous creature that inhabits this level and it's called BOIM 989. This is a very strange creature that very little documentation is done about. It gets the name BOIM, Boehm, because it's named after the first person that found this level, Davy Boehm. The level page describes this creature as the following, quote, presumably over seven feet tall and has pitch black skin, ring light white glowing pupils, and most notably, moose antlers. When BOIM 989 opens its mouth, hundreds of razor sharp teeth are revealed." End quote. So it's some kind of hybrid humanoid moose type thing, and this entity seems to be able to know the level and its layout like the back of its hand. It kind of always knows where wanderers are at, it, almost like you're invading its home. And the way it hunts down and attacks wanderers is very, very scary. It doesn't just run up and grab you or anything like other creatures, it chooses a much more slower and more purposeful hunting tactic. You see, its stalking begins underwater and sunken land. It'll start by stalking and watching its prey, which is you, from far away. It'll make small noises like splashes and scratches and taps on the water slides and in the water down there. And these small noises are just enough to keep you on your toes. As far as you thought, you were alone in sunken land. So you look over your shoulder after you hear something only to see nothing else. When the entity is nearby physically, the wanderer will begin to struggle to breathe. Their lungs seem to be filling up with water and the air will become hard to inhale. The only way to stop this effect is to escape that immediate area because if you don't, the entity will begin to attack the weakened wanderer and it will consume them. So that is the only way to know when this creature is nearby you is if your lungs begin to feel heavy and water filled. Because of this, you need to pay attention always. Don't ever get too safe here. Don't ever think you're invincible just because it's such a melancholic and calm place. It's not. Although most of the times, like I said, the entity will not outright attack you because there's too much noise and it can't really locate you. But if you go up to the outside area and walk around where there's no noise, you're more likely to become a victim. This entire level is just notably and shockingly empty. Everything feels very clean and kept up, but no one has ever been seen cleaning them. The pools, the water, the lazy rivers, the water slides, everything is connected. It's mangled together into a watery hellscape. It's almost like an addictive thing to walk around and explore because there's so many different places you can see. It has this unexplainable aura. The dripping water, the soft, cool breeze, the very slow, lazy rivers that you can just relax in forever. It seems like a dream to many. If you want to enter this level and see it all for yourself, you can find an indoor hot tub in any level, jump inside of it, and you'll be sent to the water park area. There's also a very small chance that by going down any water slide you find, you'll end up going down a water slide and falling into the pools here. To exit, you have to go to that peak place I described that all the lazy rivers lead to, 
and climb up that big yellow staircase and you'll be sent out to level negative 33. Now that you've heard the entire level's description and all that it offers and all that kind of stuff, you can kind of understand the question at the very beginning of the description of the level that I talked about. Do you miss the water slides? That question really captures the essence of this entire level and the melancholic uneasiness that it provides. These strange plasticky expanses of water slides with lazy rivers and soft rumbling water all coupled with this nostalgic design. This is what the back is meant to be. This level was an absolute banger. Drop a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching to the end as well. If you did enjoy the video, like I said, leave a like, it's free. Subscribe, it's free, do all that stuff. Yada, yada, yada. Also, while you're down there, check out my Twitter and Instagram if you want more stuff from me. I do post pretty neat pictures on those things all the time. Also, please go check out Spoogly. Just hit 100K on there. I cannot believe my third channel is at 100,000 subscribers. I love and appreciate y'all so much. Thank you for your support. If you have any suggestions for this channel, for the Spoogly channel, for Toogly channel, anything, leave a comment below telling me. Thank you for all you do. Make sure you tell somebody you love them. Life is too short not to do that. And without further ado, I'm just going to end off the video here. Peace and love.